Hello everybody, happy Monday. I hope you guys are doing great. It is uh, one we're live, it's June 5th. Um, we uh, had our kickoff for our Meadowland so long last week for um, on Memorial Day. So thank you guys, those of you that stopped by on Memorial Day or stopped by later. Um, this is going to be so fun. Uh, my name's Bev McCullough from Flamingo Toes and we are sewing up the Meadowland quilt. That, and that's the quilt that's behind me here. <laughs> um, so we are sewing up this fun quilt together and I'm really excited to do this with you guys. This is our first week of sewing. Last week was just our kickoff like, hooray, we're gonna sew together. <laughs> and then now is we're gonna dive in and I'm super excited. The first block that we are sewing up is the barn and silo block. Let's see if I can get my hand. It's very hard, it's like in a mirror. This block right here, <laughs> the barn and silo block is what we're gonna work on this week. And it's a big block, but the beauty of it is it's the pieces are pretty big. So there's not a lot of tiny pieces to work with and we're gonna get through it pretty quickly. I think you guys are gonna really have a good time sewing it up and I can't wait to see your versions of this fun uh, block. So make sure that you share photos when we're all done or not necessarily today, but when you're done with your block, share your photos. <laughs> I hope you guys are um, having lovely weather. It is warm here in Middle Tennessee and I think we're in the like upper, mid to upper 80s today and um, just not, it's, you know, summer. <laughs> we could use a little bit of rain. It's dry. My wheat outside looks kind of brown, but it's supposed to, so it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Let's see who's here. Uh, Allison's here. I know it's warm where you are, Allison. And uh, Rena and Lynn are watching from Murfreesboro. Hello, ladies. Uh, Melissa's here. Lindy's here. She got here for the live. Yay! Don's here. Linda. Darlene. Hey, Darlene. Uh, Lori's here. So glad you're here, too. Um, over on YouTube, we have Teresa and Roxana, Trisha, Leslie. Uh, Sherry's here. Katerina's here from Germany. Hey, Katerina. Connie's here, uh, Christine's here in cold, rainy Colorado and away from her sewing machine, but so excited for the sew along. Yay, Christine, thanks so much for tuning in. Pam's here, Molly from Vancouver. Deborah Pruden says 89. I'm not sure if, what that means. Deborah, is it 89 degrees where you are? <laughs> are you here where I am? Um, let's see, Lori's from Douglas, Ontario, Canada. Is it lovely? Um, Lori and Anna's here from Denton, Texas. Hot, but it'll get warmer. I get it. <laughs> yeah, same for Allison. It's gonna get warmer. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to sew with you guys. I wanted to talk to you about a few things before we dive in um, with our sewing. There are some really fun things going on. Um, we are, let's see, what should we talk about first? Should we talk about widebacks? So last week I told you guys that my uh, wide back um, for Sweet Acres are, was arriving the next day and sure enough they did. I'm very excited about this. If you're not familiar with what a wide back is, it is a fabric that is instead of like traditional quilting cottons is in the 42 inch width range, 42, 44, somewhere around there. Um, wide back is 108 inches wide and the beauty of that is you have you don't have to necessarily piece the back of your quilt together before quilting. Um, quilters, the, your long arm is gonna love it. I love it because it just saves a few extra steps from piecing your backings together. And this is the first time I've had a wide back come out with a collection. And I can't wait for you guys to see them. I have several coming up here. But the fun thing about this is that it would, it does, it'll go with more than just, um, Sweet Acres. It's going to look fabulous with Sweet Acre fab fabric quilts, right? And of course, it's going to match perfectly. But the colors are a really nice mix of colors and you're going to be able to use them with other quilts as well. I think, I haven't decided for sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to use one of them on the back of my RBD Block Challenge block quilt. 
<laughs> there were too many blocks in there. RBD block challenge quilt. <laughs> um, so let me show them to you. I can't wait for you guys to see. So it comes in three colorways, and that just means it's the same print, but it comes in three different color schemes. So the first is this peachy pink. I don't know, it doesn't look very peach on the screen. I'm gonna show it to you this way, and then I will show you the color on the other camera. So the fun thing about this is it's really big, it's kind of a peachy color, and it's got our magnolia flowers all over it from Sweet Acres, and then it also has this really great red barn on it that is um, kind of scattered in different directions. So you'll be able to turn this wide back any direction that you need to, based on the size of your quilt. So let me show you kind of the colorways here. There, that's a little bit more true to color. So it's a really pretty peachy pink, and you can see that the magnolias are large. Look at that, isn't that fun? And then the barns kind of go every which direction, every which way, <laughs> every which direction. And I love these barns, they're so cute. They have a floral, they really look just like our Sweet Acres barn um, that is the needle minder. You can see where my inspiration came for that cute little needle, needle minder. Um, but this is the same barn, and of course there's a little silo here. And this is, I believe, I haven't double checked it, let me check. I believe it is uh, would fit, yep, it would fit in a six inch block. So if you wanted to make a quilt that has six inch blocks, you could um, buy a little bit of extra wide back and do some fussy cutting and add these barns into your quilt in a really cute way. So I like that option. Or you could do other things with them. You could cut them out and applique them on pillows or a cute dish towel. I'm gonna make a dish towel with mine. It'll be just, I'm gonna just um, applique them onto the dish towel and then um, use some of the other prints kind of as a ruffle on the bottom. I think that'll be so cute. So this is the peach colorway. The other thing that I'm going to do is, um, I love how big this print is. You can see that it's quite a bit bigger. Here's the, um, let's see, we'll look at this. You can see how the flowers in the main are a little bit smaller and then on the wide back, they're quite a bit larger. You can see the size difference between the flowers. So it'll show up really nice on the back of your quilts, but you could use them for other things. And so what I'm going to do with mine, and I'm actually going to do it with this pink or peachy colorway, is I am going to make a shower curtain out of it. Um, one of my guest rooms has a, kind of a pink and aqua farmhouse vibe to it. And so I'm going to make a shower curtain. And how easy are shower curtains, right? Just hem the top and bottom and the sides, put the buttonholes across the top, and you've got a really cute shower curtain. So I'm excited about that. Let me get these, these are heavy bolts. So I'm going to show you the next colorway. This also comes in a really pretty green. Look at that, y'all. Um, so here is the green and it's got the great florals that stand out really pretty against it and then the barn on this one is this really sweet green so this is going to go great with your quilts as well you could definitely put this on the back of your metal you could put any of them on the back of your metal end quilt if you got the kit but um, the center of your kit has the barn that is made up in this kind of light pale green you can see how pretty that looks together this is the same green it it looks it is the same it doesn't look quite the same but it is and then um, look how pretty it would look with that on the back not the barn but the but the wide back so that's the green colorway and then we have one more see how pretty it is with these big flowers i love these big magnolias on the green they really pop off of it. Okay, then the last colorway is this sand dollar. So this one is really fun. It's not white. You can kind of see what the white, the magnolias are a little bit more subtle against this, but it is um, just kind of an off-white color. 
And the fun thing about this one is that the barns are different colors. So we have red, we have gold. Let's see if I can get that a little closer so you can see it with a cute little, of course they all have barn stars on them. We have green and then we have blue barns. So this one is a little bit more multicolor and just really, really fun. So it'll look great on the back of any quilt that you put it on and it's going to look especially colorful and great against your Sweet Acres fabrics. So that is the sand dollar colorway. So I can't wait to hear what you guys think of these. They're really, really fun. Um, like I said, they're the first white backs that I've designed and I have more coming out, but I'm excited to use these with more quilts than just Sweet Acres. And I did, um, I don't want to break a toe. Those are heavy bolts of fabric. Um, I think there's 10 years. I'm, I'm not selling the wide back myself. Um, most of you guys know I have a shop that has pre-cuts in it, but I don't have the time um, and I haven't hired anybody to cut yardage for my shop. So I only have pre-cuts that are like pre-packaged. Um, so I'm not selling the wide backs, but I did link to them on Fat Quarter Shop. They're in stock there. There are a lot of other quilt shops that have them as well. So if you have a favorite quilt shop, definitely check with them. Um, if you can't find them at your favorite shop, check out Fat Quarter Shop. I have a link for you there. So really excited. I can't wait to hear what you think. Oh, you guys like the idea. Oh, you like the barns on there. So great. Pam says shower curtain is a great idea. I'll take a photo when I finish it, you guys, so you can see what it looks like. I like that it won't be pieced. It'll, because it's so wide, it should, I think, I think it should be wide enough. I'll check that. But because the barns are multi-directional, I can make it as wide as I want, right? As long as I want. So it should be great. Uh, Deborah says she has the pink on order. Yay, Deborah! Oh, and Lisa Ann said that uh, she got the green and it's so pretty. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like them. Melissa says they're also great. How am I going to choose? I don't know, Melissa. You maybe ought to make more than one quilt and then you could just get one of each. <laughs> That's the grand scheme right there. So, oh, Carrie ordered the sand dollar. Oh, you guys are the best. Yay, I'm so glad. That makes me happy. I'm really glad that you guys like them. Um, it's going to be really fun to put these on the backs of quilts. I didn't have them when I made up my samples of the quilts, but I definitely think that with the colorway that I chose for my RBD block challenge, that the one of them and I'm leaning towards the green or the sand dollar will look really great on the back. So, and that quilt's almost done, you guys. It's been a busy couple weeks, so I will be sharing that in the next week, week and a half. Um, I just, I'm doing a specialty border on mine that's pieced, so I just need to finish sewing that together and get it on the long arm, and then I'll have that to show you. So it's gonna be really, really fun. Okay, let's see, next thing. Let's see, what else do we need to discuss? Okay, the um, tomorrow kicks off Fat Quarter Shop's Halloween Mystery Quilt Along. I have participated in these for several years. The Christmas one for longer. Last year was my first time in the Halloween one. Um, I'm joining in this year with the Halloween one again, and I'm really excited because I'm sewing with my own Halloween fabrics this time. Y'all, Haunted Adventure is out. It is in shops. It's, I have the fabrics, uh, the pre-cuts in my shop as well as the patterns, um, and I'm going to put together that fabric shop list for you guys um, very soon this week so that you can find Shops Carrying Haunted Adventure. Um, I'll have that link for you next week, but it'll be on the site before next week, but that'll be easy for you to find. But I'm really excited to sew along with that mystery quilt with Haunted Adventure. Um, it's um, a oranges and yellows. I have blacks and grays and then there's some really fun pops of green in that collection and has vintage campers but it also has a lot of other Halloween things. It's got spiders and uh, black cats and crows and even some skeleton flamingos and I will let you guys know that I have two brand new Halloween needle minders that are almost here finishing up production and they will be here very soon so i can't wait to share you with you guys what those are it's going to be so fun do you have any guesses any guesses as to what the new haunted adventure needle minders are i can't wait for you to see them they turned out so cute 
Um, so if you would like to sew along, this is a mini sized quilt. Um, it's perfect for putting on a table topper. I hang mine in my entryway and, and I change it out for the different seasons. I love doing mini quilts for that. Um, but they're also just great as wall decor. I have mini quilts all over the place. <laughs> they're just so cute and I change them out for different seasons or just mood or anything like that. So join us um, again. Tomorrow is when it starts. The pattern is free. All the information will be on the Fat Quarter Shop blog. I've linked to their here's what's coming post about it. Um, so the free pattern will be on their blog and I will also link to the free pattern every week. So you can come to mine, see my version in Haunted Adventure and then um, check out the free pattern. And you can download it, even if you don't feel like sewing it in the middle of summer, you can download it and sew it up in September, whatever you want to. So is anybody sewing all along with the haunted, um, with the haunted mystery quilt? I would love to, I hope you guys. Lori says she has haunted Halloween on order, yay. Dawn thinks maybe scarecrows, that's a good guess. All right. <laughs> Dawn wants to see the shower curtain. Oh, thanks Dawn. Um, Teresa guessed a flamingo and a camper, she hopes. Hmm, Teresa, you're such a good guesser. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I will share those as soon as they get here, hoping they get here soon. Um, so that is coming up tomorrow. Watch my blog for that tomorrow. So let's talk about giveaways. Every week I have a giveaway for you guys. And it's just my way of saying thank you. I know you guys have tons of options for sew alongs. It's hard to pick and it's so busy. Um, but we, um, I just really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and sewing with me. And I love our community here. I think everybody is so kind and fun and we just have a great time together, right? So this is my way of saying thank you and yay us. <laughs> So last week for our kickoff, our my giveaway was a um, fat quarter bundle of Sweet Acres. Let's switch cameras. For some reason, the front camera doesn't like me to show things. So here was our giveaway bundle for last week. It is a fat quarter bundle of Sweet Acres. Look at those cute colors. Isn't that fun? A pattern of Meadowland. And if you already have purchased the pattern, which if you're sewing along with us, you probably have, you can switch it out for any other pattern that I have in the shop, and that includes the new Haunted Adventure ones, and the cute barn needle minder that looks so fun and goes great with this collection. So you can stitch or do all kinds of fun things with that. And our winner this week was watching last week over on YouTube, and our winner is Helen Berry. So if you are watching at any point during the week, Helen, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com, and I will get your prize out to you. The easy, the, the giveaways are super easy to enter. All you have to do is just leave a comment, and that's on Facebook or YouTube, and that's whether you're watching live or later in the week, and I just draw the winner at random from all the comments, all the Facebook and YouTube comments. So leave a comment, but the only thing is you have to check the next week because I'm not really able to hunt people down. So if you have left a comment, make sure you come back the next week and see if you won. If I haven't had a prize that's claimed in a couple weeks, it goes back in the prize box. And so if you miss it, um, you don't wanna miss it. Let's just put it that way. Nobody wants to miss their prize. The other fun thing I want to share with you guys is my big excitement from the last couple months, and that is the April Sew Sampler box. If you're not familiar with what Sew Sampler is, it is Fat Quarter Shop's mystery box. You can sign up to get it every month, and you get a box of goodies that is a crazy good price, um, definitely a discount, and you get a quilt every month or some small project, whether it's a runner or a mini or like a small schlap quilt and notions and all kinds of fun things. A lot of times there's exclusives in there. And so um, I was super, super privileged to be a big part of the April box, so two months ago. And if you are um, interested in this box, I have linked to it on Fat Quarter Shop. There are a few boxes that you can purchase just as just this box, so you don't have to sign up for the whole subscription. You can just get this box if you would like. 
So let me show you all the fun things in the April Sew Sampler box. And this is what the prize is for next week. So if you would like to be entered to win, leave a comment. Da -da -da! Look at this. It's so exciting, you guys. This is total dream come true for me. So this is the April box and it is really fun. So in every box, there's like a little guide and it shows you what all the things are in the box. And there's also um, some coupons. Here's some little information on the coupons. And um, so there is a bundle of, this is a custom, look, my face is upside down. A custom fat quarter bundle of Sweet Acres. There are six fat quarters here that I curated specially for this box. So they're really cute. There's um, the main peach, there's a couple blues, greens, and then a little bit of yellow. So that is um, in the box. The other amazing thing in the box is this custom exclusive needle minder. So this cute little pinwheel flower, this is the only place you can get it. Um, I believe that Fat Quarter Shop might have them just for sale later. You could um, contact them and ask. But for right now, this is the only place that you can get the, um, this little needle minder. So cute, right? And then there's also some iron cleaner, which we can never have enough of, and a little screwdriver set, which comes in really handy for your sewing machine or just to have on hand. And then some little cord wraps. I love these because they keep your, um, your cord super tidy. And then a, an exclusive pattern for this box. I designed this quilt to go with Sweet Acres and you can see that the flowers match the flower needle minder. And so this quilt is called Picker's Patch and you get everything in here. Well, you get the um, fabric in the box to make the blocks and this cute border. If you wanna finish it out, you'll have to get your background fabric, of course, and then you can add this floral border if you would like to. So here's what the back looks, the whole quilt looks like and it's 48 and a half by 57 and a half. I usually trim that down. Um, and then here's what you'll need to extend the quilt for binding and borders and stuff. And all the instructions are in here. And this is such a fun pattern. And the only way to get this pattern is to get the April box. And then they're also doing a sew along. They do a sew along throughout every, um, box. So I subscribe to it myself. Um, a lot of times I um, will give away the box and um, or I'll give it to a friend or I make up the project because they're amazing. Um, I just really love the Sew Sampler box, but to be a part of it was a super big honor for me. So that is our prize for this week. If you um, just can't wait, which would be awesome, feel free to check out the link in today's video description for the um, the April box, I don't know how many are left. They have a few. I would not count on it being around very long. So that is the April box, and that is our prize for this week. So if you would like to be entered, go ahead and leave a comment on today's video, and I will announce the winner next week. Okay, how fun is that, you guys? Did anybody get the box? Um, Melissa says she loves that the needle minder matches the quilt. Yay, thanks all. <laughs> Janet's here from Springfield, Missouri. And Barbara says it's such a super cute quilt. Oh, thanks, Barbara. Um, Teresa asks how much fabric is in the Sew Sampler box bundle. I'm wondering if it would be enough to start on this sew along. There are six fat quarters. Um, so you could get started, but it definitely wouldn't do the entire quilt and the colors wouldn't be the same. So you could start with it though, Teresa, if you wanted to, and then mix and match in other prints and things like that if you would like to. Oh, thanks all. That's awesome. I'm so glad you guys like it. Marcia says that Picker's Patch is such a cute pattern. Thanks, Marcia. I'm so glad you guys like it. Yay. Oh, yay. You guys are awesome. All right. I think that's all of our fun, detailed things. Oh, the only other thing I wanted to remind you is we have a new $5 pattern of the month. Every month I do a $5 pattern sale in my shop 
and I have two different shops. One is like my, my main shop and then I also have an Etsy shop. So if you want to take advantage of sales, if you want to see all the things that I have for offer, make sure you go to the shop that's linked in the videos. So that's flamingotoeshop.com. My Etsy shop just has patterns and needle minders. It does not have fabric books or, in, and I don't do sales over there. So definitely get in the habit of shopping at flamingotoeshop.com. So every month in that shop, I have $5 patterns of the month, and this month is the Stacking Stars quilt pattern. It's really fun, it's super pre-cut friendly. You can get a 10 inch stacker for the um, blocks, the prints, and a 10 inch stacker for the background. And then put them together, and all you need is a little bit more background fabric and uh, border. So really, really easy, really fun quilt to make, super fast. So it's a great one to make up if you need a gift, or if you just want something really cozy in a fun fabric collection because it really shows off the fabrics. So I have that linked in the video description as well for you guys. Stacking Stars pattern is June's $5 pattern of the month. Okay, and then really quick, one more other thing, and I promise we're gonna start sewing, <laughs> is um, I had to move the Spooky Lane sew along back. So this is our next sew along. It was supposed to start in June, but because the Meadowland quilt um, had to get moved back a little bit so that moved back spooky lane so but it's still fine because we're going to finish September 18th which is plenty of time to um, put up your quilt for Halloween I almost said Thanksgiving you can leave it up for Thanksgiving that's your choice but the spooky lane quilt along is really really fun it's a, a row quilt but we're gonna sew each section up together. So we'll start with the moon and stars, then the churn dash row, then the bat row, etc. And we're gonna sew through this quilt. Um, we'll kick it off July 31st. You know our kickoffs are just, um, hey, we're gonna make this quilt. It's gonna be really fun, join us. And then we'll start sewing in August. So um, I would love for you guys to join us in this and just so you can mark on your calendar and so that you can get the uh, fabric, it is fat quarter friendly, so you can pick up a fat quarter bundle of Haunted Adventure, and the pattern is in my shop, and it should also be in other quilt shops as well, and so you can get all the things that you need for it. So it's gonna be super fun, so I wanted to update you on that. So now let's talk about Meadowland. This is our quilt we're doing right now today is june 5th so we are going to do the barn and silo and then we will continue on so next week we will be making up the patchwork rows then we will be doing the flower block rows then we will doing those cute flower basket blocks that are in the corner then we will do the stars those are the cute blue stars and then we will do the corner pinwheels then we're going to put it all together and finish it with our borders so it's going to be really fun. I'm just super excited to sew with you. So I think we should start sewing. <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm so glad you guys like the uh, the box and the, uh, fab the Halloween fabric. Yay. I won't have kits, Anita, but there are other shops kitting it up. And I will have that list for you guys this week. I will add to it as I find more shops, but I will definitely link you to or get you links for shops that are carrying the kits. So that one isn't a kit like our Meadowland kit from Riley Blake Designs, but there are other shops that will um, kit it up for us. So that's exciting. I'm so glad you guys like it. <laughs> um, let's see. Mrs. Beatty asked, I'm finally sewing together the Daisy Day quilt pattern using Daisy Fields. I want to use Dainty Daisy for the border. Would the navy be too dark or what color would be best? You could use the navy or um, the denim Dainty Daisy, either one. Denim Dainty Daisy um, has been really popular and it's not in very many shops. I did find it in a few shops, so just search Dainty Daisy and denim if you wanna use that. That's the color that is the background of that quilt but um, it, uh, navy would work great too. It would look beautiful with the fabric. So either one you could use. Okay, so let's start. <laughs> Finally, right? I just love chatting with you guys and talking about all the fun things that we're doing. Okay, so I 
am going to show you this fun block that we're doing and it's really a big block and so it doesn't fit on the screen let me show you this well I don't know if it will work the other way here let's look at it this way it's just funny what the camera's doing this is the block <laughs> <laughs> so that is the block that we are doing. It is a really cute barn with a silo next to it. And there's a darling little um, Satu star in this top of our, because all barns need a, um, a star in the center or some kind of quilt block, right? And I did a little bit of fussy cutting with the cross stitch print that is used in this. We don't use this print much in this quilt, so you're gonna have some leftover, which is awesome because you can make up really cute bags with this cross stitch print. It's just a little bit light to use in the quilt, but you can definitely fussy cut your favorite color barn for the center. I did the little red barn. I'm gonna hold that up so you can see it. Oops, there you go. So cute, right? So you have plenty to fussy cut if, you, if you'd like. And you can do the same thing. You can mix and match with your colors here. Um, and I used this light floral to go around the door, but if you wanna use the cross stitch print or you want to switch these, you can do that. I also have a cutting guide for those of you that have the kit or want to make up the quilt exactly as shown on the cover. And so that's linked in today's video description. You can check out the cutting guide so you know which fabrics to use for which blocks. So that's really fun and makes it easy. <laughs> so today we are going to do this cute little block here. And you will need the pattern to sew along with us and you can find that linked in my shop. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create the door. And I am not doing all the sewing today. I am going to shorten this up a little bit. This block is pretty simple, so it's easy to follow along with and create in almost no time. I'm going to just shimmy things around here so we have room. So what I've done is the first step, and I have sewn, I need my instructions so I can follow along <laughs> with my own pattern. So I have sewn the K pieces, those are those print pieces on either side of the door fabric, which is the green stripe. And what you're going to do is cut out your green in two different directions. So you'll want to cut out your silo, which is cut out with the stripes horizontal. And then you can, from the remaining fabric, you can cut out your door and you'll have the stripes be vertical. Now, again, you should have enough fabric to go either way, I think, on the door, so feel free to go crazy if you want to have horizontal stripes on your door as well. This is your quilt, so I want you to um, enjoy it. You could also, there's a fairly large space here. One of my testers did some applique on her door, and it really looks cute. She put like a horse on the door, and it turned out really sweet. So feel free to get creative with your barn. Um, and add your own personalized touches. So I'm going to go ahead and press these. We're pressing the seams towards the lighter fabric in this case, but you can do it however you would like. No strong feelings about that. <laughs> and so we're going to press, and all the pressing instructions are in the uh, pattern as well. So now I'm going to sew the top piece on here on the top of our barn. So let's go to our sewing machine. There we go. <laughs> Hi everyone. So this is very easy. All we're doing is lining up the top piece of our barn door on that top edge. After we've pressed those seams, make sure you go ahead and press first it's important to press first if you're just starting out with quilting um, because you want those seams to lay really flat when you sew another piece on top of it. If you don't press them first, there's a chance that fabric can kind of buckle or it isn't laying flat and then your pieces won't lay, it won't match up evenly. I'm sewing on the Baby Lock Crescendo, which is my 
little love of my life right now. <laughs> so I've sewn across that quarter inch seam, all of our seams in the quilt are quarter inches. And it says that in the pattern as well. So you can refer to it. And I've sewed that across the top. And you can see how once we press this back, it's going to be a really sweet frame for our barn door. So we're gonna go back and forth a little bit here <laughs> because we have several little back and forth steps. So I'm going to go ahead and press this. And I'm giving it a nice press there. And that is our door outline. So you're gonna repeat the steps of this process with the A and B print pieces now. And you're going to sew these on either side of the barn door pieces. Hi Rhonda, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so Pamela said she wanted all of the star legs to go horizontal, top and bottom worked, but sides she forgot and turned so they are vertical. Pamela, I think that's great too. We're gonna to talk about that in just a little bit, those star points. So I'm going to take this to the machine and we're gonna sew these two pieces on real quick. You can kind of play with your fabric too. You can just cut it out like you would any other piece, but you can kind of decide as you're sewing like how you want it to go as far as direction. The, the main print is multi-directional, but sometimes with how it's cut, you might want flowers in different spots. Um, so just feel free to play with that and see, um, you know, not fussy cutting, but kind of being intentional with how your fabrics look in that piece and how, um, how it's all placed together. So it's just kind of a fun, personalized option and just you know kind of giving you a minute to look at your quilt and it's kind of that muscle of laying out prints and fabrics and kind of playing with how they look best you know it just takes a little bit of practice this like just is an example this is what I'm talking about I'm turning this one this way now you could easily have the flowers be up a little bit higher if you wanted to but this leaf, this flower in this direction just looks a little bit upside down. So I'm turning it this way just to have it kind of look be a little bit more right side up. Now, again, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> and if I sewed them together the other way, you wouldn't think anything of it because it is multi-directional. But it's just a good, it's just good habit to kind of get into looking at how your fabrics lay together when you're sewing them together and how even though it's a multi-directional print, what you think it looks best as. It's just a good skill to keep fresh, you know, like exercising that creative muscle. So now I've sewn the two pieces to the side and this is the width of our barn. So it's getting to be nice and big. Okay, here is our cute piece that we have here. And I've got the sides of our barn on, and I'm going to go ahead and press those down. I'm using an oliso to press, and I'm kind of pressing fast. I'm not going on to the back side first, I'm just pressing it to the front. If I had a really detailed block, I would not do that, but since we're just doing one seam, I'm kind of <laughs> playing with that a little bit. <laughs> Hey Nancy. Um, so here is the um, piece and then we're going to sew this piece on and that frames out the door area. So I'm going to set that to the side because we're not gonna do that and we're gonna talk about the star. So the next thing that we're going to work on is sewing together Got all my little pieces here. <laughs> Sewing together these flying geese star points. And you can play with how you would like this to work. You can have your star stripes be vertical, or you can turn your stars so that your points so they're horizontal, or you can play with it and make some horizontal, some vertical. It's not a super noticeable thing, but you can decide how you would like yours to go. 
And so for this one, it could be horizontal or vertical, depends upon what you feel like doing. You can see that if you've laid it out the same and you've kind of paid attention before sewing, you will have to decide this before sewing that you can kind of change it around. And then here is my cute little cross stitch that I fussy cut in the center. So what we're going to do is basically take a little square of our print, of our stripe, here it is. You're gonna draw a diagonal line on one side. And if you have a laser on your machine, you don't have to do this, the laser will work for you. But if you, oh, let's see, let's pick our direction first. <laughs> so if we want all of our stripes to be vertical, and I've already done this one, um, then you're going to kind of audition and what you're going to do is just place it in place, fold it back the direction that that point would go to make sure, okay, this is the right direction for my star. So, and sometimes you'll have to turn it, you know, if you've turned it the wrong way and you realize, oh, I need to switch it, um, just try it before you sew it down. <laughs> and that saves you a little bit of time. So now I know I want my stripe to be vertical so I'm going to draw my line right there. So I'm using this marking pen that is a, um, what's the brand? I don't know if it has a brand. Mark Be Gone is the brand, I think. So there's a water soluble on one side and an air soluble on the other. I typically don't use the air soluble side unless I'm sewing immediately <laughs> because it's gonna disappear before you can get it done if you're not sewing that day. So again, I'm going to double check again. I'm putting it in place on my little rectangle background piece. I've already done this side, but we're just doing the second one and I'm checking again. Okay, that is the correct alignment for the stripes. So all I did to do this other side is I did the same thing, but the piece went the other way. So just like when you are sewing a flying geese block and you have to trim and press before you do the other side. Because these pieces overlap at the base, they overlap a quarter of an inch, you have to sew one side, cut and trim, and then press, and then sew the other side, or else it won't lay flat and look pretty. So let's go to the machine and sew this side down. Okay. So you just want to make sure that your square is lined up correctly on your piece and, and then you sew on the marked line. Now, unlike when you're doing a half square triangle, you're sewing a quarter of an inch away from the marked line. For these stitch and flip or flying geese blocks, you're sewing actually on the marked line. So I sewed right on that marked line. And now once I press and flip, I have my cute little flying geese aligned the way I want it to. And a cute pink flower. <laughs> okay, so here's our little cut piece and I'm going to trim. So I'm going to put, I have a nice um, quarter of an inch sort of um, frosted uh, section underneath my ruler. And that really helps, these are creative grid rulers and it helps me know um, where to cut. So I always place the dashed line, sorry, on the marked line, you can see that here. And then I'm going to trim quarter of an inch away um, from that marked line. So there is that. I've cut off that corner. I don't save these, I'm not a big scrap saver. <laughs> Um, and now I'm going to press, and I'm going to press it open. Hi, Lois, I'm glad you're here. All right. If you guys have questions, you know that um, I'm happy to answer them as I go. <laughs> so here is our remaining flying geese for the star. So you can see how, um, how they go together. And again, if I wanted to, I could have them be horizontal too, just by shifting them around. 
like that. Or if you want to get crazy, you can, see, I don't know if I can make them crazy. Yes, I can do this. Oh no, they're just all vertical. If you don't, <laughs> I had a grand thought there. I was thinking you could do part of them vertical and part of them horizontal, but if you want to do that, that would look really cute too. You would just need to do it before, you know, they would need to be different. So you would need to just decide ahead of time if you wanted two vertical and two horizontal. But that didn't happen, so we can't do that now. <laughs> so what we're going to do is finish out our star block with these background, or not background, print pieces. Look how cute that looks. And you're going to sew this together like a nine patch. And I'm going to show you real quick how to sew this together. So I always like to lay out blocks like this next to my machine. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for me when I'm pulling my fabrics to not and um, turn my pieces. I really don't like um, making mistakes when I'm sewing blocks together. It's, you know, neither do you. So uh, sewing um, <laughs> seam rippers are not our friend. Um, I'm also going to play with fabric color layout a little bit because I had two blocks in um, the both on the bottom that had a lot of the print in there. And so now I'm kind of changing them. So one is super printed and then this one's a little bit less um, full of print just to kind of balance out the block. And I think it looks really cute like that. So what I'm going to do is sew this all together um, and I'm going to chain piece the whole thing. And the, the beauty of that is it keeps it so that our block isn't turnable really and we can't make any mistakes so i'm taking the top left two blocks and i'm going to put them right sides together and i'm going to sew and now i'm not going to cut my threads i'm going to take the next two right sides together and i'm going to sew those two Again, quarter of an inch seam allowance. And it helps sometimes if you don't have a quarter of an inch seam allowance presser foot to get that because it's a lot easier to just follow a guide on your foot than to try and do a measurement. Um, and then I'm taking the last two and sewing those together. Again, I didn't cut my thread between that second and third rows. So I'm going to, now I'm going to cut my thread because I'm done with that section. So now I have these sewn together and held together by the, the little threads. So we're gonna open this up and then we're going to take the last column and sew these in place. And because it's all laid out the way we want it to go, it's very easy to grab what we want and to not flip it and make a mistake. So now I've placed that second one in place. Again, I didn't cut my threads. And I'm just sewing across that little section. I just lifted that up there, my presser foot up so it didn't catch the seam allowance. Um, of the piece. And now that third one is in place and sewing that in place. So, and you can do that for as many blocks as you'd like. It just, it basically, because they're nine pieces, we're gonna treat it like a nine patch and do it like that. So here is our whole block. It's laid out correctly. Our barn is facing up the right direction and we're going to press our seams now. Okay, you guys doing good? Are you having fun? <laughs> so here is that cute block held together by those threads 
And now we're going to press, and again, pressing instructions are in there, but we want these seams to nest. So we're going to press the top row with the seams out, the middle row, the seams will go in, and then the bottom row, the seams will go back out. So this allows our block to nest together really well. So you can see if I turn it the right way, seams go out, in, out. And I usually turn the block over and give a press from the front as well. I'm just shooting it with a tiny bit, not a ton of, this is flatter, it's a very light starch. I don't do a super heavy starch, but I do um, like a little bit of light starch to help the block lay flat. Um, so I just am doing that. Um, so I'm pressing on the front just to give, make sure everything is going the way we want it to go. And there, look how cute this looks. So now all we have to do is flip each side in and sew seams this way. And because we um, pressed our seams out, open and in, we, they will nest together really nicely. You can see how those seams nest perfectly. So let's go sew this together. And because our, our threads are here holding our block together, we don't have to worry that when we um, take our block to the sewing machine that it will, sorry, I'm gonna just grab a couple pins here, that it will flip and I'll we'll have the wrong direction. So I'm just gonna put a couple pins on each seam and I'm kind of rubbing my hand together with the seam to make sure that they are nested. You do not have to pin if you're um, anti-pinning. <laughs> I just, I like it to be um, nice and sturdy and I don't want that seam to shift around on me. So, and I'm, these are bigger pins. These are my pins um, that are from Riley Blake Designs. Um, I have a few boxes of the cat head pins left, not very many. Um, I have a lot more of the camper pins in stock and you can find those in other shops as well. So they're really cute and I like them, but they are nice and big and so you don't wanna sew over them. So I've sewn over that first seam and now all I have to do is flip up this bottom row onto the middle row. Again, going to put my needles in, or my needles, my pins in place to make sure my seams line up. Oh, and you can see they're pretty good on the top row. This one's a tiny bit off, but I don't really worry too much about that kind of thing. This is a little star in the middle of a big barn block and um, it's close enough for me. <laughs> I like quilting to be fun and relaxing. And if um, I'm really fretting about having it be perfect, um, that destroys some, and destroy is a strong word, but it does take away some of the fun for me. If I'm really fretting, of course we want our seams to be as close as they can be, but if it's the tiniest hair off, I don't really fret about that. But we did pretty good this time. <laughs> so here is our cute star block. And because we're going to press the seams open because it's pretty bulky on the back, I'm going to take my seam ripper. This is um, Cindy Cloward. She's the owner of Riley Blake. And I, I love this little ergonomic seam ripper she designed. And I keep it right by my machine. And I'm just going to really quickly snip those chain threads that were holding our block together because I want to press those seams open. And without that, it would have to be clipped before you can do that. So let's go press this open. Okay, so that is, here we are. Here's our cute block. And now we're gonna press our seams open. You can use the tip of your iron to do this 
and um, you know keep your fingers out of the way if you have a fingernail or if you use a stiletto sometimes that can kind of help you guide the iron through the fabric so that you are able to press that seam open without burning your fingers <laughs> Um, or if you feel strongly that you want to press it a different direction, go ahead and do that. Again, it doesn't mess anything up. If you want to press it to one side or the other, I just like, because it's bulky, I like to press it open. And you can see how pretty and flat it lays with it pressed open. Again, we're going to do a couple little shots of that flatter. And we're going to press our cute block from the front side and there we go there's our little star isn't it sweet yay <laughs> okay so to finish out the front of our barn we're going to take the two side pieces that go on either side of the star and we're going to do a stitch and flip corners to give the top of our barn that rounded effect and I have already sewn these on so this is the C piece and this is the end piece and my seam goes like this on one and like this on the other they do need to be different because you are sewing them on either either, either side of that star and you want your barn to be rounded on top so I'm going to go ahead and trim those off and press so you can see what they look like. So there's one. And we're going to do that again. And there's the other. So let's press those open. Like that. This fabric so fun. I like the way the floral really shows through on the barn. Um, because the barn block is so big, it really makes it um, easy to see the prints and, um, and uh, enjoy the fabrics, you know, when you put your barn together. Who wouldn't love a giant floral barn? <laughs> so what you're going to do is sew these on either side of your barn piece your barn star. So I'm going to just kind of walk you through the rest because the rest of this is very simple. So we're going to kind of lay this out. Here's the bottom of our barn and it kind of, you can see I'm going to pull it off the screen, but that is the whole bottom of the barn. <laughs> and here is the center bar. You don't forget to sew that in or your barn will be too short. This is the B print piece. Make sure you add that on. Then your star and the piece, let's move down even a little bit more. So your star goes here like this and you have the sides. But there is one more piece that's at the top of the barn and that is the D piece. And it has also two corners that are stitch and flip corners. The seams on this one are here and here. Again, all those instructions are in the, in the booklet. So let's trim those off and then we'll press. And this goes at the top of your barn to give it even more of a little rounded look. So let's press this. I'm off camera here. I'm pressing though, I promise. <laughs> but this is done just like the other pieces that are stitch and flipped. So you're sewing on the diagonal line, then you trim, and then you press. Okay? So this piece has two background pieces that are sewn on either side, and it is placed, let's shimmy down even further goes at the top and it doesn't look like it's a little bit off here because we haven't sewn our seams together but the goal of this piece is to continue the lines 
of the top of the barn and I'll show you on my finished block how that looks so you're going to basically this line will connect it doesn't look like it before you sew it but that quarter of an inch seam allowance allows it to do that so there is a background piece that goes there and there so you'll sew these pieces together then you'll sew that piece to this section to finish out the block then you're going to have the silo that is that long strip of green that you sew you cut out before you cut out your door and there is a stitch and flip block that's the top of the silo and it's this cute green plaid and that goes here at the top so you're going to go ahead and cut off those corners let's do it down here where you can actually see it <laughs> So you can see this is a big block, and I know I'm not sewing it all together, but we would be here until like 4 o'clock, and I know that you guys have things to do with your day. <laughs> so we're just press this here. This is a big block. <laughs> Next week, it'll fit on the um, screen a little bit better because we won't be sewing such giant sections together. Okay, here's our cute little thing. There is the cute top of our silo, and all you have to do is sew that to the top of the silo piece, then you'll sew your silo to the barn. So let me pull over my, my finished block and show you all these different sections. So here, oops, I can't get it. Here is this big block. So you can see the door section is here with those two side pieces, the center B strip. Here is our star that we've sewn the two side panels to. And then up at the top, here is that last piece that has the two background pieces. And you can see how when you sew it together, it creates a line that forms the top of the barn. Does that make sense? So then you have the silo section. The silo takes up the entire height of the barn when you um, have the little silo cap on there. And once you sew the silo section to the barn, then you can sew on, there's some sashing here. So all you have to do is sew a side piece on each side, left and right, and top and bottom. And that is from your background fabric and all of that is there so that is our cute block and that's how you put it together like Jane said voila <laughs> um, somebody asked about my little rotating cutting mat this is from fat quarter shop it is their um, five and a half inch rotating mat, and you can see it is extremely well loved I use it anytime I am doing stitch and flip or half square triangle blocks I love it it saves my cutting mat from getting all scratched up because you're cutting these blocks over and over and over in the same place where you stand right in front of your mat and it really helps to have a smaller mat and the fact that it rotates is even more of a bonus but it has a smaller mat so it takes all the wear I think this was $14 as opposed to you know buying a new mat every time you've cut you know a 120 half square triangles or whatever you're doing um, in one place it just saves the life of your mat and it's really easy and convenient to take with you too if you go and do travel so that is my little rotating mat and I highly recommend you pick one of those up so that is our block um, that is the barn and silo block like how fun is that you guys you can see how it really forms the star of the quilt so have fun choosing your fabrics for this um, again this floral is your florals are going to look great no matter how you lay them out but it's just fun to kind of look and see how you would like them to, to be um, and then we're going to go on to more parts next week and next week we are going to do the patchwork rows so this quilt is assembled kind of in the round we're starting with the center then we'll do the next row out the next row out etc so it's really going to be fun and they're really rows multiple rows but they make up the whole um, surrounding areas of the quilt so next week we're going to do cute patchwork because farmhouse and patchwork just goes really really well hand in hand together um, and it's going to be easy and fun i promise we'll be faster next week <laughs> 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed the barn and silo block. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comments here. If you are on YouTube, please like and hit that subscribe button. That helps me out a lot. And those of you that are watching on Facebook, remember next so along, the Spooky Lane so along, we will be only over in YouTube. So if you um, are over in YouTube, you are set for the next so along already. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a fabulous week. I hope you have fun sewing up your barn box. Definitely post photos. If you are sharing on Instagram, use the hashtag Sweet Acres Meadowland Quilt and Sweet Acres Meadowland S-A-L for sew along. That way we can all see and follow along with what you're doing. Have a fabulous week. Don't forget to leave a comment on the video to be entered to win the April sew sampler box with my fabric and needle minder in it. And um, again, if you are Helen Berry, you won last week's giveaway, so send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com. If you are sewing with the Meadowland kit, make sure that you had the, um, there was a correction list in there, and that is for the kit only. If you are using the pattern booklet that looks like this, that is a booklet size, you do not need to worry about that. Or the PDF. PDF and booklet people, just ignore this. <laughs> but if you are worth the kit and you did not have a little rectangle square of corrections, send me an email and I will send that to you. Um, it should have been in there. We just finished those way early and so there was a few things that got missed. So thank you guys. Have a fabulous week. I will see you next Monday. And thanks so much. Bye.